hi and welcome back to the channel uh, please remember to like and subscribe it always helps us out um, today we've got a review of a KD Litka which is a bit of a mouthful to say um, so uh, this is a another P60 light so for those unfamiliar with P60s that is a little P60 module uh, they're interchangeable this is an LED one as most are um, although they originally started off as uh, incandescent um, little bulb modules uh, from Surefire um, but uh, it's not quite such a popular format these days but I'm very pleased to see that uh, um, they are updating a few so uh, KD Litka uh, offer this host here which is their 21700 it's from their E6 range um, you should just be able to see that it says E6 um, now they've offered this before uh, it's just a regular E6 model which is an 18650 um, and you can also buy that with an extension tube, so you can run it on two 18650s. Um, and then if, I don't know how recently, uh, I've only known about this, you know, fairly recently. This is a 21700, so it takes a, a 21700 battery. So it's nice to see that the format has been updated um, to match with the new batteries. Uh, and quite interestingly, um, it actually doesn't seem to be at much of a deficit to the actual light not when you compare it to um another p60 so this is one of my favorites this is a, a, um, a solar force l2m um, i think it's a really really nice sort of edc size because it, it, it even though it's quite big it's small enough to fit in your jeans pocket um, especially when you've got a carry clip on them um, but they give you sort of good run time um good performance and because you've got that slightly larger optic on there with a slightly larger reflector you get a bit more beam distance than you're typically going to get um, out of a regular tube light um, but if we look at this uh, solar force light next to the uh, KD Litka you can see even though we've got an 18650 tube on the solar force actually the tube isn't much bigger um, to take the 21700 battery um, so it, it still feels quite nice it's quite pocketable in terms of sort of dimensions um, KD Litka also do a range of their own um, P60 modules, um, so there are still a few places that sell them. But you know, buying the actual case uh, P60 is a bit harder these days. Um, this is a one I've had for some time. It's actually a Nisha Two One Nine B that came from the International Outdoor Store, and pretty much lives permanently in in my Solar Force light here. Um, so just for anybody who doesn't know. This is how easy it is to swap out a P60 module. You literally just unscrew the head, which I've got an O-ring seal there. I also tend to pack these out a little bit. I don't know if you can just see on the camera there. I've uh, just got some aluminium drinks can, um, just to make it a bit snugger fit. Um, helps with the heat transfer a little bit. And screw it back on. And basically, you can do that and have a whole new light. Or change the behaviour, turn one into a thrower, or turn it into a flooder, um, change the tint. Very, very quick and easy. Um, so this one here, say KD Litka do their own range of um, P60 modules. They do quad optics, they do triples, and they do some single optics as well. And it's nice to see that they come with some modern LED options as well. Um, so this one here is actually the SST20 in 4000K um, 90 plus CRI. Uh, they also offer the Osram W1. Um, and there's some other sort of modern LED options out there as well as I think they still list the XPL and the XML2 as well if you want something sort of older. Um, this particular one, let's just unscrew the head on here. Because it's a, a quad optic, I assume their triple would be built um, very similar as well. Instead of having a separate reflector, we can see it's actually a brass module. Uh, there is a spring in there as well, although that's actually stayed in. Um, this is quite chunky, there's quite a lot of mass to this. Um, I'll probably put it on the scales and I'll put some figures up in the video um, but it is quite chunky so I think that's going to soak up a bit of heat itself and it has got some cooling fins on there as well um, and then I say with the extra bit of a uh, foil I've put in an aluminium drinks can it should have a pretty good heat transfer um, I would say though because that is quite a heavy brass pill with a P60M with the 21700 in here. The light does feel kind of chunky, it's quite heavy. Again, I'll put some weights up there, but compared to this one, this does feel a little bit lighter, even though they're almost identical size. In the hand, this actually feels like it's a much lighter, smaller light. 
Um, but what can I say about the host? It's quite nice. They only do it in the black. So if you were used to buying Solar Forces previously, you could buy quite a lot of different colours and body styles. Um, it has a removable bezel on the front. I haven't tried changing that for any others. I know people like to put different bezels on there. I imagine, assuming the thread is the same, it'd be interchangeable with some other bezel systems from some other brands. Um, I'm not particularly fussed about doing that. Um, the overall quality of the light looks pretty good. The only real complaint is it's got a little bit of a sharp edge just here. I think you can see on the camera it's really squared off um, just along this edge and it is just a bit rough on the fingers. Oddly this edge here has got a little bit of a bevel on it and it's nice and smooth. I don't quite know why but you know to the hand that's just a bit uncomfortable. Um, but the rest of it feels really really good quality and the anodizing looks good. Um, we've got a reverse clicky switch. Uh, and it is capable of tail standing, although it's only got two little shelves there, which while it does stand, it's perhaps a little bit less stable than some other lights that um, are capable of tail standing. But I suppose when you're wearing gloves, it gives you easier access to the switch. The switch itself um, is a little bit heavy, um, but it does work. And that's quite nice. Um, and I've also found out that the, this pocket clip here so there doesn't seem to be any options of putting a pocket clip on here by any other means. You've only got a single hole here, so you couldn't screw a clip onto the top very easy. Um, but this is actually a Convoy clip. Um, they sell them from their, their store, Convoy flashlights. It's actually the same clip I've got on here, and it fits most 18650 tube lights. And fortunately, this recess here seems to be the ideal size to put this clip in. And it just needs a little bit more pressure to get it to clip on. Um, but it's really nice and solid, um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, and it doesn't stop you taking the, uh, the tail cap off either. And it's kind of close, but it's it's not it's not actually rubbing on there. Um, this particular P60 I've got here, I say it's a, it's really nice. It's 4000K SST20. Um, I believe the specs on the K Domain website, which is where I bought this from. I'm assuming it's one of their own brands, KD Litka, K Domain, KD. Um, it claims uh, 1,400 lumens, uh, 1,400, although you can buy this in a various different Kelvin ratings. So I wouldn't expect a, a 4,000 Kelvin um, LED to produce the same lumens as say, you know, a 6,000 or a 6,500. Um, so I think their, their ratings are probably a little bit ambitious. Um, it says this is a full mode drive. You can buy it with different options. You can have, I think, 100% you can have it with some blinky mode, so we can have it with, um, in this case, they call it a four mode driver. Um, some of the other P60 modules have different driver options, such as three mode or five mode with blinkies, um, if you want that. Um, best thing to do is just have a little look at the store and see what you can find. This particular one, um, I say it's rated at uh, four amps and four modes, but it's actually five modes. It's got a hidden mode as well. It's got a turbo mode. Um, which uh, the, the literature says should support 5 amps. I've done a, a tail cap test and I am getting just around the 5 amp mark. But in my light box I'm only seeing about 900, 920 lumens out the front. Now I can't guarantee that my light box is actually calibrated um, so that one lumen is actually a real lumen. But definitely compared to some other lights uh, that claim sort of higher lumen figures. Uh, I'm just not quite seeing as many from here so... Yeah, I imagine that 1400 lumen claim is perhaps more of a, a cold Kelvin rating and maybe an LED rating rather than out the front. Um, as far as the actual P60 goes, say it's a reverse clicky. Um, you can see it's quite a warm tint. Um, it's quite nice. It is a little bit more yellow than some of my other 4000K SST20s, um, but it's by no means unpleasant. Um, I think the camera shows it there. A little bit unfavourable with a little bit of a corona um, but it isn't really it is a very floody light um, don't know if you can also see you do get some weird sort of um, up close some weird aberrations around the edge looks a bit like petals um, from the optics but you know when you move the light further away it's not a problem so so it's really floody it's really good for close-up work and for lighting up something not too far away really well but it hasn't got a lot of beam distance um but we've basically got a low or moonlight it really is quite low actually 
a medium one, medium two and a high. But what we've also got, if you double click on any mode, it should go into a turbo, which is higher than the, the regular high output. Um, but sometimes it's a bit, either a bit hard to get to because the switch is a bit heavy. So normally two clicks there would take me to sort of like medium two on the low, but if I go double click, it goes to turbo. Um, but also if you're trying to scroll through the modes, then you might end up getting to turbo instead. Although having said that, I think the amp draw between high and turbo isn't massively different. Different if it's between, you know, four amps and five amps. Um, you know, if you accidentally grab turbo rather than high, yeah, I don't think it's going to matter that much. Um, I don't think it'll make it heat up massively more than it would have been before. Um, I've not had any trouble with it getting too hot or too cold. It doesn't seem to sag. Um, the regulation on it, I think, is probably pretty fine for what it is. Um, my only real complaint, or two complaints, is this damn thing's got mode memory on it. I hate lights that got mode memory. So it's like, I can't remember what mode we just had this in. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it doesn't remember turbo, but any of the other four outputs it will remember. But I can't remember what I've used, so it's now a complete lottery when I turn this on. It's on low, okay? It's on moonlight. I just wish that you could either turn mode memory off um, or you could have it set so it always comes on low or always high, so at least you know where you're at. Um, ideally, something something this size, I'd probably want it to come to low because if I'm going to use it you know, at night, maybe if you get up in the middle of the night, you kind of want it to come on to a low, um, which really comes to my second complaint. And I think you might have just seen it there. When you activate low, most times you get like a little pre-flash if we can get it back to low okay so let's leave it in low see if it'll do it this time no it's actually gone to the next mode there I haven't obviously waited long enough for the memory um but again that's kind of annoying because you know when you don't wait for it you end up with like a it's not it's not quite a next mode memory it is a it is a retain the mode you're on memory but you've obviously got to leave the light activated for long enough um but it it does mean that even though i've bought this light and i really quite like it I've struggled to actually EDC it because I kind of want to know what the light's going to do when I turn it on. And having that little flash when you turn it on, I find really irritating. Right, let's see if it's doing it this time. No, we haven't waited long enough. But anyhow, they're my complaints. Mode memory and the fact that it does flash when you try and turn it on to the low mode. Um, so if you go to the effort of actually putting it in low so that it remembers it. Um, when you actually come to use the light, it's gonna probably irritate you. Fortunately, being a P60, um, it does mean I can just swap out that module to something else um, and retain the host. Um, and to some degree, I imagine you can probably modify the, the little P60 module as well. I've not tried taking it apart. Um, and you can build your own as well. Um, there's quite a bit of choice on the marketplace still. Price-wise, I think it was really great. So when you actually order this, I actually bought it as Let's buy the P60 module and then option it to come with this host. Um, and I can't remember what it worked out at, but it was it was really cheap. It was something like $23, I think, um, which I think was actually pretty good value for money. Um, so I'm really, really pleased that you can still buy a P60 in 2022 and then it's been updated to take 21700 batteries. Um, and I'd certainly recommend it as a host if you, if you like P60s um, and you want a new one to your collection. Definitely think about getting one of these um, for the money. Um, it is just a shame that, you know, it has got, it's got a little rough edge on there. Um, and the fact that this particular P60 module isn't perfect. Um, but it is quite good and it is quite a usable flashlight. Thanks for watching.